morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's. A special welcome to our guests and visitors today. We're glad that you're here. Pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. The theme for our worship today, we're going to ask a pretty simple question. We're going to ask, do you trust God? Well, we're going to look at a section of scripture that if you trust Him, it, it sounds pretty great. If you don't trust Him, it really doesn't uh, give them any encouragement at all. We're going to ask the question, do you really trust God? Everything you need to follow along in the service, you can find projected on the screen. We'll begin with the first hymn, hymn number 500.
follow the order of service, service of word and sacrament starting on page 26 in the front of your hymnals will also be projected on the screen. <coughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and have failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which. 
which I sent him. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 65. You can find that on page 89 in the front of your hymnals. Also, you reject it on the screen. We'll sing the song. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, 
A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man that hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, it lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth are choking, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or 30 times of a song. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day, the 500. Whose goals 
are very different, and yet these two characters end up having to work together for a common cause. It's not easy for them. And at some point, it gets to a critical juncture of their mission, their joint effort, where one of them has to trust the other. And they're not sure that they trust them because this person is an enemy. And they find themselves in a situation where if this person proves to not be trustworthy, if this person chooses to double-cross them, they're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. And so when they ask, they say, how do I know that you're going to keep your word? How can I trust you? And usually in that situation, the response from that other character is the same. They say, you don't. You don't know if you can trust me. You can't know for sure. You're just going to have to trust me. And that's tough. Now, in, in the movies and on television, sometimes it works out for them, sometimes it doesn't. But this morning, I'm going to ask you the question of God. It's a very important question to ask. The answer is very important as well. Do I trust God? morning we're going to ask that question and we're going to see three reasons why we can be trust our God. Reason number one, He gives us His Word. Now maybe that doesn't seem like a very good reason. If we don't trust God, why would we trust His Word? It doesn't seem to help us out at all. But we have His Word. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. So, when God gives us His word, we need to look at His track record. See, God gives us His word, and when we look at His track record, when we look at, at, at His dealings with us, His dealings with all people, we see that He's pretty trustworthy. When he tells us he's going to do something, he does it. When he promises something, he comes through with it. Then we look at our own track record. We see how often that we fail God. Adam and Eve broke his heart when they sinned. We break his heart all the time when we sin against him. We look at his track record and our track record. We don't match up. He's so good to us. He keeps his word. And we break our promises to him so often. And I guess if we put ourselves in God's shoes, all of a sudden, would we trust us? I think if you look at that, you put yourself in God's shoes, and it might be difficult, this, this, this person, this, this group of people that are continually letting you down, not keeping their word. And you think, but I've been so good to them. I've kept my word to them. And yet that's not how God treats us. Either. He doesn't give up on us. He's patient with us. He sticks with us and he continues to keep his word with us even though we don't deserve it. God keeps His word. God also calls us into His family. He provides for us. He adopts us into His family. And that right there doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Given our track record that He would bring us into His household, Call us his sons and daughters. But God calls us into his family. He makes us his own. If you were looking at our dossier, thinking about who you were going to adopt into your family, and then you looked at our litany of sins, our laundry list, maybe you would turn over to the next. 
next five. But God doesn't do that with us. He calls us into His family. We know we don't deserve it. And being part of His family makes all the difference in the world. Because then all of a sudden, He treats us like sons and daughters. He gives us an inheritance. He takes care of us. He picks us up. And we fall down. Another reason to trust Him. Even though we don't deserve it, He's called us into His family. Reason number three. His purpose. God has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for all of us. God has a good purpose. God has plans for us. Good plans. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Now, sometimes that's hard to believe. And it's hard to believe because we find ourselves staring at our Bible, staring in the mirror. Maybe looking up to heaven. Maybe sometimes even staring at a tombstone. I wonder how this could possibly be part of God's good purpose. And even in those moments, God still has a good purpose. Plans to work out for our eternal good. Now it's important to remember that our eternal good, because God never promised that our lives would always be easy. In fact, He told us that we were going to be persecuted. No servant is greater than His master. They persecuted me, they're going to persecute you as well. God promised that our lives would actually be filled with trouble because of Jesus. But he also promises that it'll work it out for our eternal good. So everything that you're going through, even those things that we would characterize as bad, are still working towards our eternal good. Now we still might not like them. We still might not always see the, the full picture. But God sees the whole picture. And His goal, more than just seeing us have a perfect life filled with nothing but, but blessing and goodness where everything goes right. He wants to see us with Him in heaven. And so He shapes our lives to that goal. So do you trust God? See, it matters. And it matters if we trust God because then when we look at the words of our lesson this morning, if we don't trust God, they really don't give us any comfort. See, Jesus gave us a mission to, to share Himself. To share His message of hope. But unless we trust Him, unless we actually take His words at face value, unless we actually trust Him to follow through with what He's telling us in His Word, it doesn't really help us, does it? Why would you share Jesus with anyone if you don't really trust Him yourself? So maybe you've never asked the question really in that way before. Do I trust God? Do I really trust Him? I think we usually say that we believe in Him. But trust, relying on, having faith in, that He knows what He's doing, that He's going to take care of us, that when He tells us something that we can trust Him with it. Maybe you've never thought of it that way. Well, my parents, they always brought me to church. They seem to trust God. I've never really considered myself to not trust God. See, if we trust God, then all of a sudden these words, they really, they, they, they're game changers. God tells us to share the good news about Jesus. And think about those personal outreach moments that you have. Think about that personal prospect that you have, that person at work or at your school, that friend, that neighbor. You pray about it. You worry about it sometimes. You wish that they believed in Jesus. You're not sure. 
Sometimes they say some things that think they can think maybe they can think of Jesus. But when we trust God's word for us here in our lesson, it changes everything in our personal evangelism. Because then all of a sudden, when we share Jesus with someone, when we spread that seed, when we sow the seed, it's not about the results. We don't have to worry about the results. God is going to handle that. Just like a farmer doesn't really have any control of whether the crops grow. He plants them, he waters them, sure, but God is the one that makes them grow. And it's the same thing with faith. When we share that message with others, that's all we have to do. We share the message. And God tells us that His Word is powerful. He tells us that His Word is going to accomplish His purpose. So then when we're afraid, when you're at that door, afraid to knock on it because you're afraid to have it slammed in your face, these words rob that scenario of their fear. Because we know that God's word is going to accomplish His purpose. They're not going to return to Him empty. So when we share His word, His message of hope, then it's out of our hands. So if you trust God that He has your best interest at heart and the interest of that person that you're sharing with, you don't have to be afraid of anything. You've done your job of sharing the seed and the results are up to God. <laughs> yeah, maybe you get the door slammed in your face. But after the first time, it doesn't seem quite as bad anymore. And you still don't know what's going to happen. Maybe years later, because you planted the seed, someone else is able to water it and you see that person in heaven someday. See, God's good purpose of seeing us in heaven someday <laughs> to see them have He's much more patient than we do. So do you trust God? He gives us plenty of reasons to trust Him if we look at His track record. We look at what He's done for us and for us. Do we trust God? Well, thanks be to Him because of His powerful word. We can answer that with a resounding yes. Because of His powerful word, we know we have heaven waiting for us. Amen. Please stand. May the peace which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess that faith and trust in God using the words of the Nicene Creed that you find projected on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we got the offering. We'll also take the opportunity to watch this month's edition.
Christian heritage sets us apart from many other countries in places far away and seemingly far away from God sharing the gospel is paramount. Wells pastors serving in foreign fields return to the U.S. throughout the year to share their experiences at mission festivals. Most days, Reverend Neil Bergholz walks to work on the crowded streets of East Asia. But not today. On this Sunday, he stayed side, bringing his story to Wells members at a mission festival. So after years of immersing themselves in different cultures and languages, Reverend Burkholz and his family periodically return to America to share their experiences. Gatherings like this are an opportunity for lay people to hear firsthand about the challenges and immeasurable blessings of sharing the gospel in distant lands. We've got hundreds, now thousands of people that are saying, we finally have God's word, which we didn't have for so long. Let's take this, let's celebrate it together, let's go share it with our friends. It's really nice to see um, how we're impacting the world, how other people are being touched by God's Word. It can't help but make it more real for people. It's not um, just something they, they read about and someone they just shook hands with. It's a huge mission field and it's a huge uh, need for the Gospel to be over there. This mission festival includes a meal creating plenty of opportunity to develop a personal connection and to talk about how lessons learned overseas can apply here at home. It's always great to have a meal because then you start saying, you know, what does this look like in your context? What are you guys doing? And people have ideas and they love to share stories. There's only one question. It's this interaction with supporters back home that gives our mission workers the energy and encouragement to go back into the field invigorated. It's the congregations, these dear, dear people, our mission partners, who are encouraging me. We are the ones that are encouraged to go back to the field and really take up the work. Mission festivals like this are just one outgrowth of our church's deep zeal for missions. As part of our Synod's annual Mission and Ministry Sunday, tailored worship and Bible study materials are available to augment these opportunities. Everyone needs the gospel. It's not just like the people here, the people over there need to hear it too. And they need someone to like teach it to them. Having mission workers in our midst is a reminder that we are reaching people across the globe. Our cultures may be different, but we are one in Christ. Resources for Mission and Ministry Sunday are available at wells.net. Our Wells mission staff is always available to help answer questions and connect churches with a guest speaker for their local mission festival. Visit wells.net slash missions for more. Dear Lord, because of your powerful word, we trust you. Please accept these, our first fruits, and use them so that we can share your message with the world so that more people can have that trust in you as their Savior. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to pray with me in the prayer of the church as it is projected on the screen. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand. The beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth. The joy of life and the pleasure of friendship. The good of work and the gift of rest. The privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, 
we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Who was afraid for those in need and has helped them with deeds of kindness. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. And hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Thank you. 
church and other community members of other wells and ELS and other churches to come forward to receive the sacrament. Come for all things are now ready. <coughs>
strengthen and keep you with the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Please stand. Good morning again. Good morning. 
Welcome to St. Peter's, a special welcome to our guests and visitors today. We're glad that you're here and pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. There, there are a number of announcements this morning. Um, first of all, if, if there are people, uh, able-bodied, younger people to, to help out with uh, moving some tables and chairs out of the basement directly after, after church here, that would be uh, great to appreciate if there's uh, some. Some, some cleaning maintenance going on there this week and so we need to get all those tables and chairs out of the, the basement and, and in other places like that trailer you saw on the side of the church this morning. So uh, right after church, if uh, some able-bodied uh, uh, people could, could help with that, many hands may like to work. Um, a couple of dates to, to bring to your attention. Uh, for one, August 10th is... Uh, Wells Night at Miller Park, we're trying to, to get a, a group together to go to that. Um, it's looking like um, the, the churches are going to be able to, to, to subsidize those tickets. So the cost to you should only be about the cost of uh, uh, the gas to drive over there and plan on carpooling. So uh, uh, a pretty uh, economical, affordable way to, to, to see a brewer's game and also get a chance to uh, see uh, several thousand other Christians there with you. Um, should be a fun time. Um, so if you could uh, let me know, there's a sign-up sheet uh, in the back on the counter there. If you could uh, sign up uh, your, 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 your cell phone. If it's, uh, if it's a group, sign up the, the group and the number going. If you can drive, if you could uh, put that down and then how many you could, uh, could drive as well. So it should be a neat event. We'll probably uh, meet over at St. John's Jefferson and uh, um, talk to there. Maybe even do a little campaign. So it should be a good time. So that's August 10th. And that means that we won't be having our normally scheduled worship service here at St. Peter's on August 10th. That's a Thursday night. Uh, but we will be having a worship over at St. Peter's. Pastor Joshua Martin will be preaching and presiding through that. And, and, and whoever uh, can't go to the game but does want to worship their Savior, encouraged to, to worship with our brothers and sisters over there at uh, St. John's. Uh, so, yeah. Um, if you could sign up this morning, otherwise the, the final absolute cutoff for, uh, for when we're ordering tickets uh, um, um, would be uh, this, this coming Thursday, August 3rd. We have to do them by that date. So we're going to purchase the, the whole group um, and then we'll, we'll distribute the tickets uh, to the group on the day. Um, then August 19th, we have our, our church picnic coming up. It's uh, actually quite a, quite a day. We've got the, the, the hot hustle, the 5K. At night, we've got the picnic and uh, outdoor worship, and then we have games and family fun. Should be a, a great time. So, invite all of you to come, bring your friends. Uh, could be a you know, outreach opportunity there to, 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 to give people a chance to, to get to know our church family. So, it should be a wonderful event. That's August 19th. Um, and then on that day, you can uh, bring us some, some interesting items. So, uh, this year, we're, we're doing something different, and we're entering a float in the the, the Rome Jump Parade. Uh, super excited for that. It should be a, a great time. Um, the the father-in-law is helping out with that. We're going to have an entry for that um, across. And, and then where we need your help is uh, a few things. To, to, to bring some junk to, uh, to, to land to our flow to make it look uh, just gorgeous. And uh, we're going to have a, a, a cross there. And then the, the sign is going to read something like, bring your, your junk to the foot of the cross, St. Peter's Lutheran Church. And uh, should be a neat time because uh, quite a few uh, people that are in our mission field are going to be there and seeing those floats. Um, along with that, we're going to be distributing some candy and some, uh, uh, some refrigerator magnets, actually, that have our contact information. And uh, should be a neat time, so we're going to need some, uh, some volunteers for that, too, to pass out uh, candy and, and magnets on the day of the parade. So it should be, a, should be a good time if you're interested in helping out in the the parade bringing, bringing junk or, or passing out uh, candy or magnets up. Let me know. It should be a, should be a good time. <laughs> There's also an announcement for uh, the ladies' aid. Um, the, the meeting has been pushed back. It was going to be this this coming Wednesday. And we're actually going to push that back. So it's going to be Wednesday, August. <coughs> it's going to be that um, that ladies' aid meeting. So we're not going to do it this this Wednesday because of the, 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 the fun and festivities happening down in the basin with, with that maintenance. So um, that will help out to the next week, Wednesday, August 
nine at the same time on that seven p.m. So, so hopefully you can adjust your calendars and make it to, to, to that meeting. Then finally, Judy uh, reminded me to to announce that there's going to be cookies and lemonade out in front of church. So uh, please uh, help yourself and enjoy some refreshments out there. Cookies and lemonade, uh, always a good thing. Any other announcements? Just reminding everybody that the Help of Christmas Parade is having their annual chicken barbecue next Sunday. Yes, yes. That, thank you. I was uh, supposed to make some mention of that. On the screen, I was told that it was wrong. It's not going to be a winging it. It's going to be at the, at the Fireman's Park. Um, so that should be a good. I think it's, what, Richard, $5 for a two-piece and $8 for a four-piece. Is that right? Uh, six or eight. Six, six and eight. Six and eight. Six and eight. And that's uh, the proceeds go to the to the Helm of Christmas Parade, which, as you know, is a pretty awesome uh, awesome event here in Helmville. It's also a chance where we get to to participate in, uh, and have some fun. So, uh, if you're able to, to come to that, should be a, a neat event to support that uh, excellent community. Thank you, Vicky. Um, any other? Announcements that I've got. There's a whole slew of them. Oh, Bible class, yeah. Um, so, so Bible class, we'll, we'll have that. Uh, um, we'll have it. We'll have it here still, so people can come to church. But we'll have it. We'll have it up in the sanctuary here, and uh, we'll have a good discussion there. Um, should be a neat time. We actually uh, got to talk about. Uh, the, the LDS Church Latter-day Saints, and uh, this week we're going to take a look at um, um, the Jehovah's Witness organization. So if you can stop by on a Tuesday night, 7 p.m., a lot of Bible study, we'll have it up here in the sanctuary since we won't have access to the Tuesday. I think, I think we got through it all. Thank you for uh, your patience and the plethora of announcements. So make sure you sign up uh, or let me know about the Miller Park. Uh, that should be a good time. And, uh, very reasonable as far as it is an expensive. God's blessings on this week.